Let's start with the plant. I used the soft transform and the bend to animate the geometry and copied the head to the end of the curve so that the head would follow and made sure that the UVs are not changing so that I can export as a vertex animation texture. So at frame one with a time shift, I could UV the whole thing, then attribute copy the UVs to each frame. And I did the same thing in here for the spider. But the extra thing I used here is uh, the Kinefx tools and I used it on each of the legs. In here, that's one of the legs. And with a rig pose, I was able to animate one point. And uh, with a full, full body IK, all the other points would follow this one point. And I made sure that the, uh, the tip of the leg, uh, like the root of it, is pinned to the body. So all the legs would go up and down with the body. Now the issue is, it's one loop. Uh, so with a chop net, I was able to cycle this loop. Now I have a looping animation. Then I polywired the legs and uh, did the same thing with the UVs with the, an attribute copy so that uh, they, they don't change so that we can export as a vertex animation texture. And this part on the right, uh, I exported a few points uh, uh, to use uh, as a Niagara system so that I, I can copy these uh, spiders in engine to these points. Now, the character, uh, that's Severog, the Paragon character from Epic. I uh, put it in here, uh, use a gradient, uh, 3D gradient uh, according to a Y position, then bake that into the texture. Uh, so that I can use this as a mask in engine uh, to mask out the areas I don't want because uh, he had a lot of extra cloth and that cloth wasn't behaving uh, as expected and he had a weapon and I didn't need the weapon so all of that is masked out I don't need it and uh, but the other problem here he's still carrying a weapon although there's no weapon it's an invisible weapon so I had to mix and mash the animations together in a way so that uh, it, it feels natural. It doesn't feel like he's still carrying something he's not. Uh, so one animation, his hand is down and the other, his hand is uh, like 90 degrees. So I got the hand from one animation and put it into the other, blended it with the other. Uh, all of that is using the KinFX tools, uh, side effects just added. That, that's, this here is just another example of how you could uh, retarget uh, the Mixamo uh, rig to the Paragon rig or vice versa. So you could move the Mixamo character and, and then the Paragon would move with it. Uh, this is uh, another experiment with the, the Unreal character. I'm just trying to animate something quick here with uh, the rig pose just to see if uh, it's even possible or not. Uh, it's not the best. Like you shouldn't <laughs> do this with the rig pose. You probably need uh, some curves to guide uh, like some proper rigging. But uh, in here I was just messing around. Uh, anyways, so let's let's move on to uh, uh, the simulations. So I brought in all like the whole environment and drew some curves. And with the pop sim, I made sure that these uh, points would follow the curves and go up the walls. But one uh, extra thing here, I used the uh, actual environment as a collider. Uh, so I made sure uh, uh, that I VDB the uh, environment and use it as a volume sample uh, so that the points wouldn't intersect through the uh, geometry, they would go around it. But it, it didn't feel grounded. The simulation didn't feel grounded. I need to sp I needed to spawn something as it gets closer to the ground. So with an XYZ disk, I was able to uh, uh, detect how close am I to the surface and then spawn some points. And from those points, I used another pop sim to spawn even more points. <laughs> I know that's a lot of points, but uh, uh, 
with a GPU SAM uh, in in uh, Niagara, it can handle it. Uh, it's like a- around five thousand. It's not a big number. It's four thousand. But one last thing here, uh, I ha- I was having an issue here uh, with Niagara. Uh, it didn't like how I, I was uh, deleting points and spawning points at the same time. Uh, the point number was changing and uh, things got messy in in an engine. So instead of deleting points, I was uh, I gave them an at dead attribute. So Niagara would kill them instead of me killing them in Houdini and then making this whole mess. Uh, in here, uh, I added uh, some uh, legs <laughs> to this whole simulation. So it kind of feels like a centipede, uh, like crawling up the wall. Uh, so in here with a solver, uh, I would know the path of a few points. I just picked a few points, not all of them, just a few. And they kind of go along this this path. With a time shift, uh, I would know where you, this point would be in a few frames. And uh, I would connect. Connect the current point with the time shifted point. And then these points would go along this uh, path. And uh, used some curl... Uh, uh, noise-ish stuff, uh, so that I would get some more shapes out of uh, uh, th- these uh, legs instead of them being so straight. Uh, but they were so jittery after I added all that noise. So with a chop net, uh, I can uh, soften uh, the transition of the animation. So you see how, here how like it's so jagged, but with a filter and a Gaussian uh, uh, filter, uh, I was able to uh, soften this uh, transition of animation from one frame to the next. Uh, and I made sure that uh, they snap to the surface because I have the surface. I need them to like kind of like latch on uh, every few frames. And I would animate this uh, attach detach uh, uh, frames uh, uh, with an XYZ disk and that kind of stuff to know how how far am i from this uh, uh, surface and you can see here how the legs are trying to grab on but not quite because i just uh, added this extra bit of uh, uh, attachment uh, just to the tips of each curve uh, using a gradient of sorts and this one here that's an extra one this this is uh, uh, not using the the other system this is a, a another like a sort of similar one uh, i'm uh, explaining like uh, rep- presenting here a, a simpler version of it uh, that's where i started experimenting with this idea of uh, when i get close to a surface i connect and uh, the the target would move with it move every few frames jumps ahead and then i would connect and disconnect from it uh, so, so that it feels like I'm, I'm trying to grab onto something that is gonna be there, like in here, uh, it's gonna get close to the window, but I needed to, I needed it to know that there's a window there so that it would, it would, uh, start, uh, uh, reaching out to the window before it even gets there. So in here, in this, uh, uh, few points you're seeing in front of you, like the red points are the ones are, uh, they're, they're snapped to the surface, but the white ones are the ones that are trying to reach out. And both of them are moving along the path of the uh, simulation, um, the, the pop sim that we did earlier. Uh, same thing here, chop net to uh, soften the animation, XYZ disk to uh, snap, but I didn't like how the snapping was so snappy. <laughs> So with a solver, I was able to uh, uh, get the positions of the previous frames uh, and kind of lerp uh, with that. So it's it's trying to snap, but it's getting held back by the previous positions. So it, it gets this kind of drag effect. And in here, uh, I would get the uh, uh, current and the time shifted ish uh, points and then I would just connect them and now that I have them connected I could 
uh, loop over each of these curves and give them some more visual appeal. Kind of like curl them, curl them a bit uh, and attach and detach them with this other uh, value that sits outside of the loop. And I would uh, animate that value and it would go inside the loop and uh, change all those values uh, as I see fit because I'm animating that in the timeline.